Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. During a financial crisis, can a bank take money from your bank account? The answer is yes. And this is something known as a bail-in. So a bail-in provides relief to a financial institution on the brink of failure by requiring the cancellation of debts owed to creditors and depositors. The thing is, we have not seen this since the Great Depression, so it's not something that is very familiar, at least in America. But a bail-in did occur not too long ago in Greece. In 2013, ATMs were frozen, bank accounts were frozen, and a portion of some bank accounts had money taken from it. So this is the difference, right? The reason we never saw this in America is because typically when financial institutions, when banks go under, when they go bankrupt, we have instead a bailout. So I just mentioned a bail-in where they take money from creditors and debtors, but in the past, or at least in our time in America, we have bailouts. And this is when the government injects money to save these banks. So in 2008, with the financial recession, the government injected $700 billion into the big, biggest financial institutions, including Bank of America, Citigroup, and American International Group. And the government, they, they do mention that it doesn't have its own money, so it uses taxpayers' funds in these cases. So that's typically what happens. The government bails these big banks out, and that also comes from money from the taxpayers. But never did we see, since the Great Depression, money actually taken from our account. But as I just mentioned, in Greece, the, uh, the, with the bail-in, depositors with more than 100,000 euros, they had to write off a portion of their holdings. So it's not likely that this would happen even if banks failed. And the reason is because after the Great Recession, we launched the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC Insurance, and that was in 1933. That's why when you go to your bank and it's insured, it says F, uh, sorry, FDIC insured up to $250,000. So even if a bank fails, the FDIC will ensure that you get your money back. And according to the FDIC spokeswoman, Lawan Williams-Young, Quote, no depositor has ever lost a penny of insured deposits since the FDIC was created in 1933. So this is a bit reassuring. But the problem with this is we never experienced such a horrible time since, nine, since the Great Depression. So now approaching, you know, we're in two, 2020. Things aren't looking so great today as of March of 2020 with everything going on in the world and the markets. And I hope it doesn't get any worse. But if it does get worse, if this panic continues, it is possible that banks can go under. We, as I mentioned, we've seen banks go under many times, so it wouldn't be surprising for banks to go under. But what happens, though, if it gets to a situation where they need money? Will there be a bail-in or will it be a bail-out? The, during the Great Recession, people had money taken from their bank account. So just imagine today in 2020, you have you know, $10,000, $20,000 in the bank account, and over the week, you just notice that it's gone, zero, and you never get that money back. This is what happened during the Great Recession, but today we have FDIC insurance, which supposedly would protect us from having this ever happen to us. This man on the screen right here, Vivian Thomas, he's a very famous figure. There is a movie made about him, and it's a true story. It's called Something the Lord Made. It's about this man, Vivian Thomas, along with a medical doctor. They created a surgical procedure to fix a heart condition. The thing about this is Vivian Thomas, although he helped develop this procedure, he was not a medical doctor because he never had education. The reason he never had that education was because the money that he saved up to eventually go to medical school was taken from him during the Great Depression and he never got it again. So what's going to happen in the future if we ever get to a time where our major banks, our major financial institutions go under? We don't really know at this time. We would like to hope that even if banks went under, there would not be a bail-in. Or even if there was a bail-in and money was taken from us, luckily, or I guess hopefully, we would get that money back through FDIC insurance. But the important thing to note 
is the FDIC insurance never failed since 1933 because we never experienced anything since 1933 even close to the Great Depression. So what happens if we do get to a time that is similar to the Great Depression? Again, we don't know. But there is something that we do know for sure. And this can happen not, you know, even if we don't reach levels of the Great Depression, even if we just reach bad markets and many banks go, up, go under, we do know some things for certain. Number one, ATMs can be frozen. People will have trouble going, taking money out of their bank. This would be something known as a bank run. And when everyone goes to a specific bank and asks for their money, the bank doesn't actually have all that money at once. So they'll freeze accounts, freeze ATMs, and people might not be able to use their money. So this is something that could can happen. And if it were to happen, you know, hopefully this wouldn't be long lasting. Maybe it could be for a couple days, a week, a couple weeks, but people won't have money taken from them. So how does one protect themselves? Whether it is having money taken from you or it's just simply having your account frozen. The only way to protect yourself is to own assets that you physically own. Not that someone is holding for you, but that you own yourself. The most simple version of this is owning cash. Again, this isn't having cash on a debit card. This isn't having cash in a savings account. This is having physical, cold, hard cash in your pocket. And you know, ATMs can dry up or they can freeze them. So it's important just to keep this on your mind if you ever are worrying, just to get some money out beforehand. And as you know, in markets, when things are going bad, people sell out of assets and especially risky assets and they hold cash because that's what they feel is safe in, you know, in these distressing times. The other important thing that people have used for thousands of years that you physically own that holds its value is gold. And again, this is physical gold. For example, this is holding gold in your house. This is holding gold in a vault that you have control of, that you can physically touch. This isn't the same as holding a ETF backed by gold. An ETF is a financial product that will be held by a third party and it's backed by gold. But in the end of the day, it's not gold itself. It's an asset or a financial instrument backed by gold. So if that financial institution goes under, then you don't have that gold anymore. The asset goes along with it. And it is important to mention that FDIC insurance does not cover ETFs. So if you own gold in an ETF and you think that you own gold, the truth is you don't. Maybe 50% you own gold, but you do not truly own gold. In a true financial crash, you no longer have that asset. And of course, as you know, this channel is called the Bitcoin Express. The one that I really wanted to get to was Bitcoin. This is decentralized cryptocurrency that you own, no one can take it from you as long as you're holding it yourself. If you hold it on an exchange, it can be taken from you. But if you hold the private keys yourself on your own private wallet, you own that cryptocurrency. Also, no one can freeze it. You can continue to send it across the world. Now, if you're into cryptocurrency, you might be wondering, what about other projects? What about Ethereum? What about XRP? What about Cardano? Well, you have to ask yourself, when it comes to a financial crisis, things can be paused, things can be frozen. So you would want to go into an asset that is decentralized, meaning that no one really has control over it. There is no central party that can pause it, freeze it, or stop it. So in looking in a cryptocurrency that you might want to hold prior to times of distress or in times of distress, it's important to look into how distributed is the network and how resistant is it from being stopped? So again, just wanted to recap that in true financial crisis, banks go under and that we know, we've seen it time and time again. And if it gets to such a horrible point, there can be a bail-in where money is taken from people's bank account. So just an idea to consider are holding assets that you physically control, that you physically own. I went over cash, I went over gold, I went over cryptocurrency. There might be other things that I didn't mention today, maybe something you know about, but it's very important to note that that is something that you physically own. Thank you for listening. I hope to see you next time. And if you like my content, I want you right now to go down below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Have a good night.